Times are changing and many people are searching for an alternative. This channel is for anyone looking for resources, ideas, and opportunities to change their lives. A simple change of lifestyle can have a huge impact. Having the right information is the first step. To get the most up-to-date information hit the subscribe button and notification bell. And if this content was helpful make sure to like the video. In the comments below tell us what your plans are to get off the grid. Thanks for watching. The plan is to build most of it myself in the paddock at home and then buy some land and move it to that land. Doing it this way will require two building consents and one resource consent so it's technically more expensive to do it that way. But I'm going to avoid giving any reasons for any decisions shown in this video because I'm aiming for a 5-6 to six minute video as opposed to a 1 hour video. So if you'd like to know why a thing is the way it is, feel free to ask. You may be wondering how long this will take. Well I've never done this before so I can't make any accurate predictions. But I have read about somebody in Australia who built one in about 9 months. Although I'm not sure how much of his time each day was dedicated to working on the container. There is a software developer somewhere in the States who built one and documented the process quite well. He claims it took him 20, 288 hours including research and design while excluding cutting and welding. I've probably already spent at least half of that time just on research and scratching my head while I would figure out how to use Blender so I think 288 hours is a bit optimistic. I'm aiming to have the house completed within one year of receiving the container although I'd still call two years very successful. The deck extends for the length of the container to provide a decent outdoor living area. It will have a barbecue bench which extends into the kitchen, we'll come back to this later, chairs, table and or couch with a washing line down the end, three outdoor lights, one outdoor wireless AP and two wired APs attached to the frame. The transparent corrugated shelter will also have some sort of shading device we can extend and retract when needed. This end doesn't have a whole lot to look at aside from the standard doors of a shipping container. Here is the utility side of the container which carries the most amount of weight and has the least amount of wall penetrations. On the left side we have two windows for the bedroom and the third biggest window leads into the bathroom. There are two outdoor heat pump units, one for the air and the other is for hot water. Those are all supported by a wooden bench on top of bolted on C-section cross members. Below that is an extra support for the middle of the container. Although you won't see this on every frame because I keep making changes and I don't want to re-render the whole video every time I make a change. The colourful pipes and wires under the container is my guess of how plumbing and electrical things will all connect. The plan is to have these done by a professional, although it's very expensive, so I'd like to do anything I can to help repair them and bring the labour costs down. For example, drilling holes in the, of the correct size and location or adding pipe supports before any pipes are installed. Ideally it would be good if I could do the whole job and then pay an expert to check it and tell me what needs changing. I may be able to do the wiring and have it checked, but probably not the plumbing. I've read it depends what region you live in though, so that'll be another call to the council to clarify another day. Pretty much all of the wiring and plumbing goes straight down out the bottom of the container and then where to where, wherever it needs to go. Assume the red pipes will have insulation around them as well. The container will rest on four timber piles or possibly sure foot foundations. Down this end we have the kitchen window. All of the windows and doors will be double glazed. Each window and door will have a flat piece of metal welded to the corrugations. These flat pieces of metal will then be screwed to the UPVC or wood window framing. Then the windows will be ready to slide into place. There's a little more to the window framing but we'll come back to that later. The roof is covered with reflective paint and there won't be any cuts anywhere up here. That concludes the outside tour of the house so it's time to go inside. To our left is the kitchen, middle is the office, and to the right we have the lounge. Walking into the kitchen, we have the fridge on the left, double sinks in the middle, cupboards and shelves everywhere, the microwave, dishwasher, induction cooktop, oven and range hood run along the utility side. The bench that extends through the window I mentioned earlier is here. It's more of a summer thing, but the windows can be open to increase the depth of the bench. The ceiling lights will be covered with diffuse and Fresnel sheets. 
In the lounge we have the heat pump, wall mounted TV, media box, switch, ONT, router, PoE injector and vent which carries warm air to the bedroom without needing the bathroom door to be open. Through the next door we have the bathroom slash laundry. Through the final door is our bedroom. The bed itself is quite high off the ground so we have loads of space to hang and store things. There are more cupboards under the stairs as well. That brings us to the end of the interior tour. Next we'll have the framing and an insulation. Closed cell spray foam insulation will cover the ceiling, walls, floor and will be 51mm thick. If you see any gaps that aren't from a door or a window, assume they will be filled with spray foam. I just didn't feel like modelling a perfect contour of the foam against the container in every single spot. The window frames will be screwed into the studs, all studs on the wall will fit into the concave parts of the corrugation. As you can imagine it took a bit of shuffling around to get the interior and everything to line up. Structural plywood will be used to connect the studs as seen running across the top and bottom of the walls. These boards are the same depth as the plaster board. The ceiling battens won't be integrated into the ceiling stamps of the container, instead they'll be placed to line up with the studs. The ceiling will have 45mm thick bats plus spray foam as well as the reflective paint on the roof we saw earlier. I'll probably get another uninsulated container to use that as a shed, then possibly convert half of it into an extra room at some point in the future. But I don't want to get too far ahead of myself right now, so I'll start with a single container with no deck. Anyway, that's pretty much all I have to show at this point. The next step will be to draw up some floor plans, get a limb report, build and consent, and then I'll be well on my way to owning my first home. If you'd like to download the blend file and have a look through the house yourself, feel free to download it through the link in the description. Thank you for watching the video. We hope that you enjoyed it and found it useful. For even more information, check out the description below.